Hey guys, Brendan in Productions here, and uh, with my recent tutorials on Java and the object-oriented programming aspect in Java, I thought I'd take a step back and go back to uh, Visual Basic and uh, teach you how to use some object-oriented uh, stuff in there. So let's go ahead and jump right into the tutorial. I've already started a .NET Framework 4.0 Visual Basic 2010 project, and um, in this project all we have is a form. So um, what we're going to want to do is, let's just say that this form keeps track of uh, bank accounts. And what you want to do in this bank account is you'll be able to add and withdraw money, obviously. So the first thing that we need to do is actually design the form around the bank account. So we're just going to add a bunch of common controls here. Uh, we're going to add some labels. And... Um, Label 2, uh, I'm just going to rename that to label initial, LBL underscore initial, and it's going to be called, an, or the text is going to say initial amount, and label 1 is going to be called LBL underscore name. Now, naming the controls I found really does help while coding, uh, now that I code a lot more than I previously did. Uh, so the way I name controls is the control type shortened. So for example, labels are LBL and then underscore and then the label's actual name or the control's actual name. So sorry for the lack of explanation in the beginning of this tutorial. I just want to jump right into it. So then we're going to add two buttons. Each of these is going to either deposit or withdraw $10. And we'll set more information on the text. So once again, we can rename button one to button btn underscore deposit, and then the text is going to be deposit ten dollars, and btn two is going to be button withdraw, btn underscore withdraw, and it's going to say withdraw ten dollars. And um, now, of course, we just need to add some text boxes here. and then we'll be all set setting up our form. So text box txt underscore name and then initial amount txt underscore initial. And that is how you uh, get started on a nice program. So what object-oriented programming does is it allows you to actually uh, use objects. So for example an object is uh, just an item that you use. So a button would actually be a control which is a type of object. A uh, text box is another control which is a type of object. So a control is an object and in programming objects can be used to do anything. Um, so we can go ahead and get started creating our own object and this object is going to be a bank account object. Now in order to actually add your object to your project you're going to want to add new item and then you're going to want to make sure it's selected as a class file. And then the class1.vb down here, you're going to name, rename it to uh, what you want your class to actually be called. So ours is called bank account. And then it opens it up, and as you can notice, in uh, class files, there's actually no window designer or no visual designer whatsoever. It's strictly code. And uh, that's good, because we don't need any visual designer. So. The first thing you want to do when creating a class is you want to create some public variables that you can use throughout the class. Well, actually private variables uh, that you can use throughout the class. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a private uh, variable and this is going to be called um, amount and it's going to be a double and this is going to be the amount of money that's currently inside this bank account. And we're also going to make a new uh, string called name that keeps track of the bank account's name. And I think those are all the variables that we're actually going to need to use recurringly inside of the class. And then with these variables, uh, we're also going to need to make public methods that um, return values for these. So since these are private, they can only be accessed within this class, which is good. Um, so in order to access them outside of this class, we need to make functions to do so. Or 
um, subs in this case. So in order to actually put in a value for amount, we are going to want to make a public uh, sub, and it's going to be called add amount. Oops. Add amount, and then we need to set a parameter by val amount as double. And now what we want to do in this sub is we actually want to say amount equals amount plus amount. Whoa. Now obviously this can get kind of confusing since we have the global amount and the amount parameter. Now to differentiate between the two, uh, we can use me. Now the me dot actually initializes um, that we are saying whatever is in this class. So we're saying bank account dot amount, which is bank account dot amount right here, uh, equals me dot amount plus amount. And this amount, since it does not have the me dot in front of it, is simply this amount. Um, so that's good. Now we can add the amount. And now what we want to do is we also want to get a function that returns the amount. So we're going to create public function get amount. And this doesn't need any parameters. And all we're going to do with get amount is actually just return the amount. Now what returning does is it simply uh, returns it. So yeah. And then on the end of this function line, uh, you'll see more explanation on this function later, um, we can say as double. So we're actually going to return the amount as a double variable. And now there's um, the name variable that we actually need to create some public f subs for as well. So we're going to say public sub set name. And we also need to byval name as string. And the same thing, we need to do me.name equals name. And then we also need the public function get name. Uh, this does not need parameters, my bad. And we just want to return p.name. And this should actually be me.amount just to keep things uniform. Now, these things right here are called, uh, they're called setter and getter methods. So all we're doing here is we're setting and we're getting. getting. And this is just to make uh, the object easy. Now, since you don't really know where, where we're going with this, uh, this should be a little confusing to you. But what we do when using this object inside of our actual form is we're actually going to create a new instance of it. So we're going to say, this is a new bank account. We want to add money to this bank account, and then we want to subtract money. So since we want to add money and subtract money, there's also going to be one more method we need here uh, called public sub withdraw amount and then by val amount as double. And then we want to me.amount equals me.amount minus amount. So we're just withdrawing here. Um, we're setting the global amount equal to the global amount minus this set amount. Now another easy way to tell if we have the me set up properly is if you click on the end of one of them, it will actually highlight all of the ones with the same uh, all of the same variables. So we could say we, we highlighted this amount, which also highlighted the amount up here, not this amount. If we highlight the ed amount without the me, it also highlights the parameter here, which means we're doing it right. <clears throat> so as I was saying, what we would want to create is a new bank account. So we want to tell Visual Basic that every time a new bank account is created, uh, we want to do something. And this can be done with the new method. So we could do this with public sub new and then we want to add some parameters in here so we're going to say by val initial amount as double so when we create an actual new bank account we're going to be sending in the initial whoa the initial amount information so you'll see it's so hard to explain this without any uh, visuals but so since we send in the initial amount information we're just going to say that me dot amount equals initial amount so that takes care of that now if the programmer doesn't ever want to actually describe an initial amount we can also create another new method 
that doesn't have any parameters and it's just going to automatically set the initial amount equal to zero. So when the programmer actually creates a new bank account uh, sorry when the program actually creates a new bank account object they have the option of either sending in the initial amount via parameter or not sending in anything at all which will automatically set the initial amount to zero now this set of code is actually called the constructor so most of the time um, people comment it as you know can constructors and they dedicate a entire section to it and sometimes they even region it out by using the pound region constructor and then ending the region below the end of the constructor constructor subs and then we can just minimize this out and uh, here we've got the constructor section and we can actually keep the class very organized by creating a new region called getter or getter methods rather or we could just say getters and then inside this region we actually want to take our getters and just plop them in there so now if we minimize getters we have add amount withdraw amount uh, and set name and then we have the getters and constructors which aren't really important uh, once you have them initially set up so now that we've got our bank account class actually set up we can uh, go back to our form and actually do some stuff with it so um, the first thing we want to do is uh, we're going to add a new button uh, yes so we're going to sorry for my I'm trying to think through this uh, as I as I go but we're going to add a new button and this button is actually going to be called btn underscore create and what it's going to do is actually create the new um, the new bank account and we are going to click this as soon as we type in the bank account name so what we're gonna do is we're gonna double click on create bank account button and this will bring us right to the code that uh, happens when the button is clicked and then we're going to um, create a new bank account so we're gonna say dim um, mm. okay see the the problem here is what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new bank account here in the create buttons clicked or er, sub but the only thing is since we created it here we can only access it in this actual sub which will be a problem when we try to add and withdraw ten dollars by actually clicking the buttons so that is definitely a problem so what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna create uh, the bank account I guess in the beginning I kind of set up this program very poorly um, okay so we're just going to uh, continue with my <laughs> poor setup here and we're actually just going to create a public a global bank account for us to use and uh, see no I don't want to do that though yes okay I do want to do that <laughs> sorry so what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna create a new global bank account and this could be done with public and we're just gonna be call it BA short for bank account as bank account and as you'll notice bank account is listed here and it is not standardly like that but since we have our class bank account we can now access it so all this is going to do is create a variable BA that can be reused throughout the program and um, when this button create is clicked we're actually going to want to set it equal to a new bank account so we're going to say me.ba equals new bank account and then we can open up parentheses and it's going to ask for the initial initial amount as a double and this is going to be the um, txt initial amount dot text now the only problem with this is it's going to return a string value so what we want to do is we actually want to convert this value to a double by using the command cdbl which actually casts this string value into a double value so we can use it and send it over so now that we have a new bank account we're actually going to want to uh, 
set the bank account's name. So we're going to want to say me.ba.setName. And we already have a text box set up for that. And that's txt underscore name. And there we go. So when you create the um, new bank account, it creates the new bank account. And then it sets its name. And then we're going to display a message box uh, that says bank account created. OK. Now on to back to the form, we want to uh, deposit $10 into the bank account. So we double click on the button and it leads us to this uh, snippet of code or this section of code where we actually type in the code for the deposit button. And so we want to deposit $10. So we say me.ba.add amount. And this is going to be $10. So that's 10.00. And there we go. And then uh, for the withdraw ten dollars button, we're going to want to do the same thing, but me dot ba dot withdraw amount, and this is also ten dollars. And then back to the form, we're also going to add a new button which retrieves uh, the actual amount inside of the account. So this is going to be button retrieve, and the text is going to say retrieve. So when we click on the retrieve button, uh, we're actually just going to want to display a message box saying the current uh, balance in this bank account is, and then we're going to um, say me.ba.getAmount, and or that's it. That's all we need to display in the message box. So now that we have our code set up, we can classically begin to test it. So we run it, the debug, and um, first it asks for the bank account name, so I'm just going to call it Brandon's bank account. And then the initial amount, I'm just going to make it um, $550 because I'm feeling rich. So we're going to create the bank account, and it's going to say the bank account is created. Now the user can't see anything that's going on until we start to deposit money. So we're going to deposit $30 by clicking on the deposit button three times, one, two, three. So that should keep, give us a, a uh, amount of $580 now. And then we're going to withdraw that $80, leaving us at a total of uh, 500 So we click this eight times, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And since we should have an amount of $500, we can press the retrieve button, and we should get a message box that says so. So it says the current balance in this bank account is 500 which is correct because we added 30 to make it 580 and then we withdrew that 80. So that's how you can create your own objects and use them within your uh, within your class. Obviously when keeping track of data this is a very useful uh, aspect of programming known as object-oriented programming. So if you have any questions or comments please feel free to leave a comment. Remember to rate, comment, subscribe and um, please check out the forums. I'm sure there'll be information about this shortly. So have a great day, guys, and I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.